The Princess, Pauline Curran. Pauline Curran, 1893-1988, socialite, princess. Pauline was the youngest of ten children, the youngest of six daughters of Hobart auctioneer and Tasmanian Turf Club secretary John Berry Curran. He was a friend of George Adams, the Tattersall's man, and received 20 shares from George which formed the basis of the estate that Pauline inherited. The family lived down the Tasman Peninsula, but John was frequently staying in Hobart for his work. Pauline was born on Thursday the 9th of February 1893. Her father named her after a horse that won the cup in the days before her birth. Pauline was a society girl and often frequented the social pages with the daughters of the governor. They would attend regular dances at the governor's residence in Hobart. She was described by the Mercury newspaper as the Belle of Tasmania. In 1918 came the ill-fated betrothal with Captain Patrick Fitzgerald, Eau de Camp to the governor Sir Francis Newdigate. Despite an official announcement of their engagement in the illustrated Tasmanian Mail, Captain Fitzgerald left Tasmania to rejoin his regiment, Buckley's Regiment in England, and did not honour the betrothal. Pauline's father died in 1921, leaving Pauline and her mother alone, but very well financed. In 1924, with Pauline now in her thirties, Pauline's mother feared that she would be left without a husband, so they went off to the debutante balls in London, where they met Prince Maximilian Melikoff who had fled his country after the 1917 Bolshevik Revolution. Originally from Georgia, Tbilisi, Max's family had long ties with the Tsar and the Romanov family. Max had only one brother. In London and across Europe, he was their driver for the duration of their visit. Pauline Curran was a very wealthy lady, but was looking for a title, and Maximilian had a title, but was stripped of his wealth. Their engagement was announced 21st of January 1925. In 1926, Pauline and her beau returned to Hobart, to St David's Cathedral for the most glittering society wedding Hobart had seen in a long time. Max wore his Cross of St George, the Cross of St Anne, a Romanov medal, the Inter-Allied Medal and the Star of Persia. Pauline splashed out on a new car for the wedding and their following tour of Tasmania, a Hudson Super 6. It was a little overloved at the wedding with people scrambling over it for a closer look at the bride and to take pictures. It was so badly damaged she had to get another one for the tour. After the wedding, they spent four months touring around Tasmania before moving to Sydney for a while and then off to Cairns. Max had a family there. Pauline liked to collect antique furniture for her London apartment everywhere they went. They had trips back to Australia and frequent sojourns to London. Pauline and her mum returned to Tasmania for a visit in November 1931. Max was to come but received news of his father's death. Pauline was asked for the fashion news by waiting media on her arrival, as she often was. In 1929, Max went to East Africa big game shooting. He stayed there for nine months. On his return home, he gave private lessons in Russian and did crowd work for the films. Pauline found his war wounds hard to manage as he could not settle well anywhere. 
They were socialites and Max lived the social scene somewhat in the style of Mr Selfridge. It caught up with him. In 1934, he was working as a stable boy in Ascot Stables of Sir Archibald Weigel, former governor of South Australia. Pauline and Max had drifted apart and seemed to be living separate lives. One telling sign was an ad in the local papers for a super bed, padded green brocade, P. Melikoff, 8 Hertford Street. In Max's own words, he had been an instructor in the Turkish cavalry, a tennis instructor in San Remo, a film actor and ballet dancer in Rome, a partner in a chicken farm in Nice, a professional gambler in Monte Carlo, and a trapper of leopards in Kenya. After all of this, he led a life of seclusion until his death in 1950 at South Sea, Hampshire aged only 54. Pauline and her mother went on living at the London Mayfair apartment and seemed to live a quieter life throughout the war years. Pauline visited Tasmania through the 1970s and saw friends at St Anne's Rest Home. She had made plans to return home to Tasmania for her final years, but those plans went awry. In 1981, her London home was invaded her and her butler were overtaken and she was tied up with stockings and had much of her jewellery stolen. She became more reserved and seemed to lose the courage and strength to pack and head home to Tasmania. Princess Pauline Melikoff died on the 30th of January 1988 in London. She left her London apartment and British assets to Greenpeace a bequest to St Anne's Rest Home and the rest a $16 million bequest to Tasmanian Parks and Wildlife to undertake work for the conservation of seals and dolphins. Perhaps it was the liquid eyes of the seal pups she saw on her journeys around the rocky outcrops of Tasmania or maybe the guilt from all her furs from wearing furs back in the 1920s. <laughs> 